A review of Total War Rome Remastered. 2004's Rome Total War is a classic game that really propelled the Total War series into the spotlight. While the first two games in the series, Shogun and Medieval Total War, were excellent games and were very cool in their own right, Rome Total War was when the series made the jump to 3D and became a household name. This remaster has been highly anticipated due to the aging engine of Rome Total War making it especially difficult to run the game on modern hardware for a lot of people. In this review, I'll let you know if this remaster is worth your time, or if it's a pass. Let's get into it. What's included? Total War Rome Remastered is a complete package that includes the original Rome Total War, as well as its two expansions, Barbarian Invasion and Alexander. All of these campaigns provide the player with hours of content, with Alexander the, being the least replayable of the trio. The Creative Assembly and Feral Interactive have touted that there are new factions added to the campaigns, but in fact there are no new factions. The factions that were previously unplayable in both Rome Total War's Imperial Campaign and in Barbarian Invasion have been unlocked for play here complete with intro videos, 2D art, and faction descriptions. While it is very cool that these factions have been unlocked for play, I don't feel like they should have been advertised as new factions during the promotion of the game. The games are launched from a single launcher, but they launch separately like the originals. Now, let's talk about all the campaigns. Rome Total War's Imperial Campaign is probably the one that most people are nostalgic for the most with its 270 BC start date and several smaller factions. This campaign is truly an imperial campaign. Your goal is to build up your small kingdom into a mighty empire and dominate the Mediterranean. I have to say, despite being an extreme stickler for historical accuracy, especially when I was younger, I was instantly immersed as soon as I started a Julii campaign back in the day. The excellent art design, the beautiful map, the immersive campaign map soundtrack, the small start position, the feeling of vulnerability in a sea of hostile and rebel factions, it all made the original Rome Total Wars campaign stand out to me. Now, of course, I eventually discovered that the game was not very historically accurate. What with its uh, Bronze Age Egyptians, almighty Britain chariots, and Easterners all wearing brightly colored pajamas, together with Arakosian headgear. And this inaccuracy remains the same in the remaster. It all just looks much nicer. However, I have to say, having played Vanilla Rome Total War again in preparation for this review of the remaster, the game is incredibly charming and immersive in a way that Rome 2's main campaign just can't quite match. This campaign is also made more interesting due to the fact that each faction plays quite differently. In a campaign as the Greek cities, you're going to be relying heavily on your pikemen, as your cavalry are lackluster at best. As Parthia, you'll be doing a lot of skirmishing with horse archers due to your lack of effective infantry, and your enemies relying on slower, heavier infantry. As the Romans, you have powerful and maneuverable infantry, but somewhat poor cavalry. And as the Britons, you have to learn how to use chariots effectively. All in all, for a lot of people, this is the campaign that defines the original Rome Total War. The second campaign included is Barbarian Invasion. This campaign starts in 363 AD and does suffer from some of the same issues as the standard campaign, including the fact that it isn't the most historically accurate. However, I have to say, Barbarian Invasion is the campaign that feels the most improved from the original to me, and this is due in large part to the phenomenal improvement to the look of the units. For some reason, the units in the original Barbarian Invasion just look bad, worse than those in the standard Rome Total War for whatever reason, and they definitely needed the remaster treatment badly. I am glad to say that the Barbarian Invasion units now look better than those in the remastered standard campaign and I'm really glad to see it get the attention it deserves. The late Roman Empire is a fascinating time period with many interesting factions, characters, militaries, nomadic and barbarian incursions, and I really hope to see a lot more mods based on this period for the remaster. 
The original Rome Total War did get the Invasio Barbarorum mod series, which is a phenomenal series of mods, and I think continuing the series on Rome Total War Remastered would really invigorate those campaigns, and, more importantly, improve their stability and increase the possibilities. Barbarian Invasion has a somewhat less diverse selection of factions, but I have to say, for me, upon playing the remastered version, it has become a favorite of mine, and might even be somewhat more replayable than the Imperial Campaign, due to the addition of the newly made playable Horde factions, like the Romano-British and the Ostrogoths. When you play as a settled faction, like the Western Roman Empire or the Sassanid Persians, factions like the Romano-British or Ostrogoths only spawn when certain conditions are met. However, if you choose to play as a spawning faction, your starting position and the units in your starting army are random. This is a boon for replayability, and I feel like it might be something modders can take good advantage of as well. The last campaign included is Alexander. I personally never really played Alexander much back in the day for whatever reason. Due to being a historian that focuses on Mesopotamia, I always had a soft spot for the Achaemenids, and it was a bit sad to see a Total War campaign devoted to their destruction. However, all that went out the window for this review as I happily went out and took down Darius III and his empire. It is a fun experience, though the campaign is not without its issues. It is very much a railroaded experience, and you constantly have to face down similar Achaemenid forces across almost the whole map. This does make Alexander the least replayable of the three campaigns, which is why it has always received the least attention from modders until the last few years. But it is quite fun and immersive too. I even grew to like the much maligned map, which includes a quite oddly shaped Greece, Crimea, and its general weirdness all over the place. It is the only time Total War has tackled the legendary, magnificent Alexander the Great, and it is the only Total War campaign to include the Achaemenid Empire in all its glory not just its mostly off-map presence in Rome II's Wrath of Sparta campaign. And for this, I do appreciate it despite its flaws. To me, it's no doubt the weakest of the three campaigns. I feel like the Alexander campaign needs to be less abstract in order to work better, and, if, and you don't really feel the magnificence of the Achaemenid Persian Empire that you're trying to conquer here, and this is somewhat of a shame. It is fun though, and I'm sure modders will be able to improve the experience on offer here. The Campaign AI Of course, Rome Total War has been covered to death over the last 17 years or so, so I will try my best to focus on the aspects of the campaign that have been improved in the remaster. First things first. Feral Interactive stated that they have overhauled the diplomacy and diplomatic AI, and I have to say that this is an extremely, extremely refreshing overhaul. While the AI has not become a diplomatic genius, the diplomacy system is at least now more transparent, and the thought processes behind the AI's decision making is also more clear, making it possible to actually try to wheel and deal in a way that makes sense and isn't immersion breaking. Alliances are a bit more stable, and the AI is more inclined to sign ceasefires or become protectorates when logical. Now, the AI still backstabs at times, and you can be surprised by such things. But this is perfectly fine, and it gives the various factions some more semblance of personality. I am extremely pleased that they took the time to improve Rome Total War's diplomacy system and make it more transparent. It was definitely one of the weakest parts of the original game. It's not perfect here, but it's definitely better. Now let's talk about the campaign AI. Rome Total War's campaign AI did have several issues, some of the most annoying ones were its inability to garrison cities properly, its inability to conduct naval invasions across the sea, and its insistence on creating a thousand tiny stacks of a couple of units each. Feral Interactive has stated that they have worked on the campaign AI, and it shows. The AI actually invades across the sea rather effectively now. The Scipii will invade Sardinia and North Africa, Pontus will invade Greece, etc. Now, the Barbarian Invasion AI back in Classic Rome Total War was a bit better in terms of its naval AI than regular Rome Total War, but I'd say that the remaster is beyond that level now, and it's good to see. 
In terms of the tiny stacks issue, I won't say it's been fully cured of its affliction. But the AI is much, much better about consolidating its armies, and it, and it will at least face you down with decent half stacks, and even several full stacks when its economy is doing very well. I'm looking at you, Egypt. The tiny stacks in the original Rome Total War were probably one of the most annoying issues for me personally in the entire game, and I'm really glad that it has at least been mitigated. Of course, I'm not saying it's perfect, it's just better. The AI absolutely creates small stacks, and sometimes you'll find a lone general without an army, but it at least seems to do better in terms of army creation overall. Now regarding garrisons. While the AI perhaps does leave a, bit, a couple more units in cities than before, I really wish this aspect had been improved just a tad more. I feel like it has been worked on, but perhaps such, to such a minor degree that it is a bit hard to tell. Okay, fine. I'll say it's been improved slightly, and the AI generally leaves slightly larger garrison forces than in the original. So overall, campaign AI has been improved quite a bit from its original state. It has seen improvements across the board, especially in terms of its most glaring issues, diplomacy, naval invasions, and the creation of endless tiny stacks. The AI is also definitely not passive here. And the game is always active and something is always going on on the campaign map side of things. It's definitely a bit more decisive than before, the AI, that is. Now, Rome Remaster does change and add a few things to the campaign, including toggles for the visual styles you want, including for the saturation of the campaign map and realistic and vibrant unit colors, which of course also change the unit cards. They have also added merchants here, and I feel like perhaps this was a restoration of cut content. They don't add too much to the campaign for me, since I was not a huge user of them in Medieval 2, but it is nice to see some additions like that here. Merchants are also toggleable, like most of the other additions in the remaster. The battles. Now let's delve into the battles. This is where things get a little more complicated to talk about, and things might be a little more subjective and difficult to pinpoint. This is especially true due to the fact that I was never a huge player of vanilla Rome Total War. It had been many, many years since I've actually fired up an actual game of unmodded Rome Total War with the intention of playing the whole campaign. While mo mods cannot edit the battle AI since it is hard-coded in the engine, they can affect the AI's performance in battle by altering the formations, the environments, and the settlements. All of these affect AI pathfinding which is, of course, one of the biggest issues in the original Rome Total War. Feral Interactive has stated a few times that they did put some work into the battle AI in order to mitigate its well-known issues and fix bugs. They did not state that they were going to pull off a miracle with this. Now, I will say that in my opinion, they have done what they stated they had set out to do. In classic Rome Total War field battles, I feel that the AI suffered from indecisiveness and oftentimes froze or started and stopped moving quite often, which made it especially vulnerable. This has been rectified to a degree, but overall field battles don't feel that different to me. I'd say that the AI is better able to gauge the strength of the player and seems to do a lot better in terms of forming up defensively and withdrawing at times rather than rushing at you with inferior forces. Now, this isn't to say that AI is a genius now. It absolutely is not. But it has been improved across the board, and that is a good thing. Now let's talk about siege battles. Rome Total War is quite famous for its siege battles, especially in terms of its horrible pathfinding. Feral Interactive has clearly put some work into this. Pathfinding around gateways has improved quite a bit, I have to say, and I'm very pleased since they were just ridiculous in classic Rome Total War. Pathfinding in settlements is also improved. It's still an issue, but honestly, if you think about it from a realism perspective, it was not that easy for large ar armies to simply march into cities during a siege assault, and things often descended into chaos. Just look at the way Pyrrhus of Epirus died. I will say that the settlement pathfinding is definitely better though. The AI also had a tendency to freeze when sallying out at times, at least in my experience, 
see my last dream of invasio barbarorum ruina Rome for barbarian invasion, invasion as one example. But I have yet to encounter such a scenario in my testing of the remaster. Of course, once mods start to push the boundaries of the engine and the new settlement pathfinding, we'll know more about exactly how much it has been improved. Pathfinding near settlements is also still rather annoying, especially in regards to skirmishing units. When they are anywhere near walls, I've found they simply don't know what to do. So when you have skirmishers near walls, be sure to micromanage them with skirmish mode turned off. I have definitely come to prefer the modern style Total War battle controls and camera, so I'm glad to see them here in Total War Rome Remastered. It makes battles easier to control, and they are definitely much smoother than the old setup. In terms of campaign and battle balance, Feral Interactive did state that they would be rebalancing a few things in the remaster. But honestly, not much has been changed. Most units have the same stats, battles take around the same amount of time as in classic Rome Total War, and the Seleucids collapse in a few years just like in the original. I will say that chariots are less overpowered than before, even though they are still quite annoying. I'm looking at you again, Egypt. The graphics. I have to say, I am impressed with the graphics in Rome Remastered. I think, overall, they have upgraded the visuals quite a bit, yet they have also retained the visual style and feel of the original, something which isn't that easy to do. The map looks nicer, no doubt, and its saturation can be toggled to the player's preferences. The animations are somewhat smoother and improved, but are essentially the same as the originals. The units themselves look phenomenal overall. The Eastern Infantry, on vibrant colors, are simply magnificent. The Barbarian Invasion and Alexander units look much better than the originals, and a lot of the Imperial Campaign units including legionaries, the Armenian heavy spearmen, and Greek hoplites look great, especially on realistic colors. The colors pop in the same way as they do in the original, more so when you're on classic colors. The UI. Now, the user interface of the remaster has been a big point of contention for a lot of people. A lot of people have stated that it seems that the inter like the interface of a mobile game, uh, it is unintuitive, it is worse, it is horrible, it's a deal-breaker. And honestly, for me, personally, it's fine. It has its advantages. For example, it does a nice job of helping you not forget about your agents, which is something I was wont to do in the original. And it also prevents clutter on the screen in a number of ways, including the way it handles notifications and divides them into categories to make them less overwhelming after a particularly eventful end turn. Do I prefer the old UI? Probably due to nostalgia, but honestly I'm quite pleased with the new UI and I'm glad it takes up significantly less of the screen so you can focus a bit better on the action. Remaster versus Remake It should be stressed that this is a remaster and not a remake. Feral Interactive stated that they absolutely wanted to base this off of the old engine in order to best replicate the feel of the best battle engine the series has ever had, that being the one for the original Realm Total War. The fact that this is a remaster and not a remake has sort of hamstrung them in a few aspects, no doubt. The original Realm Total War has AI issues, pathfinding issues, and a slew of bugs. The remaster does fix the bugs including the horrible memory leak that caused instability, but due to running on the old engine, some things were just not fully fixable. While the AI is improved, it still has problems and it isn't that smart. The gravest issue for me, however, is the pathfinding. While I don't dread every siege battle or sally out battle anymore, like I did in the classic game, they still have pathfinding issues, especially in barbarian type settlements and it can still be extremely annoying at times. These issues have been mitigated to a degree, but have not been completely solved. I hope they continue to work on improving the pathfinding post-release, because it honestly still needs work. So this all begs the question, is this a good remaster? Let's quickly compare this to another remaster I've been playing recently, Command and Conquer Remastered. 
Now, just like Command & Conquer, Total War Rome Remastered upgrades the visuals with 4K textures and more detailed models, and repackages the game and expansions into one neat, upgraded package with a modernized UI. However, just like Command & Conquer, the issues of the originals, while they have been mitigated to a degree, still persist. And uh, funnily enough, I'd say that pathfinding issues are the main problems in both Command & Conquer and Rome Total War. I will say that Feral Interactive has done some work on these issues again, including the pathfinding, so I still have hope that they will continue to work on improvements even after release, which they have stated they will do. Now, Command & Conquer Remastered does have a couple of things that Rome Remastered doesn't, like a fully remastered and redone soundtrack, as well as a toggle so you can go back and forth between the remastered and classic visuals. While Rome Remastered does use higher quality files for the soundtrack, it would have been nice to have the soundtrack completely remastered as well, and a toggle for classic visuals for those who would like that would have been nice too. All in all, I think that Total War Rome Remastered does an excellent job for a simple remaster, and is very much faithful to the original in all its glory. Now should you buy it? Total War Rome Remastered was desperately needed, and is going to be an excellent canvas for many new and creative interesting mods that will be able to push the envelope more than we ever thought possible with modern Total Wars. For those players that are not into mods or modding, Total War Rome Remastered is still an excellent game that stands on its own and will provide players with hundreds of hours of content, with three very different feeling campaigns, and an array of diverse factions that play very uniquely. It will also serve as an in excellent introduction to the older games for more recent Total War players. I heartily recommend Total War Rome Remastered, and I have to say, I'm extremely excited for what the future holds with this game. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and subscribe if you enjoy videos and streams about the historical Total War games and their mods. I'll see you in the next one.